Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RegamerTitter.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with HPE, also known as Hewlett Packard Enterprises, teaming up with AMD, with Epic, in the data centre, which is an absolute huge win for AMD. And then keeping Team Red's theme going, we're going to move over to Ryzen 2, specifically confirmation from the company on release dates and other information on the upcoming Ryzen 2 processors. But as I said, first things first, Hewlett Packard Enterprises have made a very big announcement with Epic and AMD. Now, don't forget, AMD are also going to be working alongside Dell Technologies when it comes to the server market. But this new announcement with Hewlett Packard Enterprises slash AMD is really big deal for the data center. Typically, HPE work alongside Intel for the data center, but what they are going to be doing now is bringing back the Pro Liant, so that is Pro and then L I A N T D L 385 server brand. And this is on its Gen 10 lineup, so in other words, it's the 10th generation of these particular servers. And as you can probably guess, it's going to be utilizing AMD's Epic processors. So why is this such a big deal? Well, first of all, it's an extremely lucrative contract for AMD, which in and of itself speaks volumes for the company. But there's also another reason. HPE are incredibly well respected in the market of putting together servers, right? Putting together server racks. So the fact is, as Forbes.com, who originally ran the story, say, this is a massive commitment for HPE because not only is it putting the reputation of the sales um, the whole sales system of HPE on the line, but furthermore, it's also a big uh, checkbox that, um, that uh, HPE are ticking in terms of their belief in the reliability and service of Epic. Because ultimately, if these processes they don't, you know, if they don't prove to be reliable, HPE are going to be the ones that the customers are going to be calling. They're the ones that are going to have their reputation slapped down a few pegs. So obviously the fact that HPE and Dell and a couple of other companies as well are now um, starting to roll in the Epic uh, orders for the processors, that's a really big thing for AMD because not only does it improve the market share of AMD in terms of you know the number of processors that people are purchasing, but also it increases the mind share. And you never know, like these people... They're also going to recommend their processors, you know, even the Ryzen processors to their friends. It's also going to, of course, be a big deal generally because these type of um, news stories, well, we're covering it. Other technology, um, you know, outlets are covering it. And furthermore, it also is a really good positive sign for AMD in terms of their stock. Ultimately, and obviously you guys know this as well as I do, if you have good news coming out about your company fairly consistently, stock prices rise, which means, of course, your market capital, the, the funding of the company, improves. So, what type of technology are they fling, uh, flinging in, excuse me, to this particular motherboard? Sorry, I'm still a bit nasally, so sometimes my nose is going a bit weird. Um, for those who don't know, I've just been getting over a cold. So, HPE are going to be utilising Project Olympus Dual socket universal motherboards and in this particular uh, instance HPE are adding additional features including NVMe boot drives to the AMD Project Olympus compatible reference designs. They also decided to back in August release a different storage server and this one is actually the Cloudline CL3150G4 data storage server which is very very cool in terms of the IO utilization of Epic because it allows a connection of up to 24 NVMe drives without using a PCIe switch, which, as Forbes themselves report, decreases IO latencies and, in theory, improves performance. So it actually looks like AMD are onto a winner when it comes to Epic. There was some definite questions on how well they could, com you know, get in commitment because they had already some customers who were obviously pretty interested, and big customers as well, including Microsoft, but that doesn't necessarily equate to a large interest. However, it does look like they are managing to grab in a lot of customers in with HPE, and also Dell uh, now starting to utilize it. Obviously, as I just mentioned, Microsoft are using uh, Epic in the Azure Cloud, which 
all of these things are very positive signs for AMD, and that does mean, of course, the company are going to have a lot of money coming in, which is definitely positive news. Next piece of news, and this one concerns the Ryzen 2000, which it looks like is going to be a Pinnacle Ridge. There are some questions still what we're going to be seeing with Pinnacle Ridge. Some folks are saying that it's going to just simply be a die shrink with not much change in architecture. Other rumours, such as the ones we were covering yesterday, is that we're going to see an increased core count or possibly some changes in the actual processor itself, so perhaps slight improvements in design. We can't 100% know this. A photo from MoPC.net, which is spelt exactly how you'd imagine, MoePC.net, has emerged onto the internet. And what we see here is a full Ryzen rollout, which does indeed tell us some information on the product lineup of AMD's processors, which is going to be emerging over the next few days. So let's quickly go over that first. Um, obviously, we won't really discuss processors which have already been released, such as Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 and that type of stuff, because as I just mentioned, they've already been released. But it looks like the second generation of processors for in the Ryzen family is going to be launching in the first quarter of 2018. And according to this roadmap, AMD are also planning to launch Ryzen 3 mobile APUs, Raven Ridge, as well in the first quarter, along with the business orientated Ryzen Pro mobile APUs. And those are going to be expected to launch in the early um, part of next year as well. So there are a number of questions regarding what we're going to be seeing with this. The most likely is that it's going to be utilizing 12nm uh, plus fabrication node. That's basically been confirmed at this point by AMD themselves, which should do the obvious thing, increasing the uh, performance per wattage rate show. And of course, we're most likely going to see higher clock speeds. Now, the room I covered yesterday is we're going to see clock speeds up to 5.1 gigahertz, which personally I'm somewhat skeptical of, but, you know, maybe. The best way of saying this is it's going to be more of a tock rather than a tick. But a tick is going to... Excuse me, this is going to be a tock rollout rather than a tick. So, from the rumours, the next generation Zen 2 is going to actually be the tick. The next question is what is going to happen with the names. Let's face it, the first option would be Ryzen 2000. The problem with that name is that because this is not technically Zen 2, instead it's going to be, you know, an improved version of the current architecture, as I said, on a smaller node, that type of thing. Is it going to be known as Ryzen 2000, or instead is it just going to have a slight change on the current naming scheme? So, for example, are we going to see like an 1850X, or are we going to see like, you know, the the uh, current processors slightly increase in number? Well, that's going to be a bit difficult because obviously they've already used the 1300, the 1200, they've used, you know, 1600, 1700, so most likely AMD's options are to either go with the 2000 series or to go with something like, you know, the 1650X or the 1850 or whatever processor. The bottom line is, until these things actually launch, we're not going to know what type of specifications we're going to see. As I said, some rumours peg the 2800X, assuming it ends up being called that, with up to 24 threads. I covered that yesterday, running at 5.1 gigahertz. That image has been doing the rounds a lot over the last few days, and I mean, it's technically possible, I guess. The main, the major issue I have with it is it would cannibalize a lot of Ryzen uh, Threadripper sales, and also that's a high clock speed, like 5.1 gigahertz. I, I, I don't know about that. It's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, increase in clock. That's over 1.1 gigahertz in some cases. The other possibility is we're just going to see a more modest clock speed boost, perhaps, let's say, 4.5, maybe 4, let's say 4.3 to 4.6 gigahertz, let's say 4.5 is a nice median, and probably the same level of cores as what we've currently got. So the Ryzen 3s would have, you know, uh, f uh, four cores, Ryzen, you, you know what I'm talking about, I won't go into the whole core count thing, but in other words, a maximum of eight cores, uh, 16 threads, but with, as I said, a clock speed increase and possibly some IPC improvements and lower power consumption as well, which would still make it a very compelling product. It would still be very hard for me to recommend a lot of folks anyway. There are some usage scenarios which would certainly dictate Intel. But for a lot of folks, 
I imagine Ryzen would make an awful lot of sense if AMD can make a few other changes, if they can slightly increase the IPC, perhaps even if even if it was a modest boost in performance, let's say 5%, on top of, let's say, a 10% clock speed increase. That's not bad. Let's say if they can uh, get 15-ish percent performance on top of, for single thread, on top of what they've already got, and on top of the, you know, general optimizations which developers are now starting to incorporate into Ryzen, uh, processors, you know, when they're creating games or whatever. So I can certainly see there is a lot of arguments that Intel's Coffee Lake might be somewhat dead, especially if, once again, the company cannot put out this 8-core processor, which has been highly touted. It was, you know, mentioned an awful lot, but we've just not seen anything of it. So I'm starting to believe that that's not a real thing. But who the hell knows? All of, all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.